Hi, I'm Luann Aiken with Tagawa Gardens here in Centennial, Colorado. You know, a whole lot of people who don't consider themselves gardeners still care a lot about their lawn. And Tagawa gets a lot of gardening questions about lawns and lawn care, and they go to our garden experts and get all kinds of answers. John has been a Tagawa staff member here for seven years. He gets a lot of lawn questions too. We do. Handles them with all kinds of uh, information. What is the best and first thing we need to do in late spring, early summer, before the heat sets in to take care of our lawn? We have a wonderful lawn care program here. It's on paper. We want customers to come in. We want to give them that tip sheet. They can find it online at our website. For us here, everything begins with aerating our lawn. That's where we really want to focus. That first step is that deep core aeration of your lawn. Why is that so important? We're dealing here primarily with clay soils here in not Colorado in whole, but up and down the Front Range we're dealing with clay soils and throughout the course of the year that clay soil just continually compacts itself. That inhibits good root development, uh, water penetration, air penetration down through the soils. By aerating that soil we are opening it up. We're loosening up that soil that way. Making it more root friendly. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so we have aerated the lawn. Step number two would be what? Let's address if you've got some issues with your lawn. Possibly your lawn needs some repair over the winter. Uh, your lawn may be thinning. It may be an older lawn. Now is a great time to do that first step of your first, what we call overseeding, getting some grass seed down, thicken back up that lawn that way. And then would we fertilize right after that? We don't want to fertilize right after we've seeded. We prefer to hold off about six weeks after we've seeded before we apply that first fertilizer application for the year. Okay, so if the lawn is healthy and doesn't need to be reseeded, we aerate, we... At that we point, do? we're gonna fertilize. At that point, At we that we're gonna fertilize. Okay, okay. Yep. What do you recommend in the way of fertilizers? What should people look for? What we prefer here is what we call a slow release fertilizer. We don't want to overstimulate that grass immediately. Our number one fertilizer here at the garden center is, is uh, Pro Rich by Richlawn. It's a Colorado produced fertilizer. It's a natural organic based fertilizer. Uh, we're getting help from chickens at that point. If you hear, I you understand. read about DPW, <laughs> yeah. dehydrated poultry waste. So the chickens are helping our yard out. So homeowners have their choice when they go to fertilize. They can use a broadcast spreader or drop spreader. What's the difference and what do you prefer? Well, the two traditional ones, first your broadcast spreader. That's my personal preference probably because that's the one I've always used. Okay. And a drop spreader. And a drop spreader, again, you're filling up the hopper with the fertilizer. In this case, though, that drop spreader is pretty much staying right down in the line. What about the settings on the fertilizer spreaders? Settings, you always, whichever fertilizer you use, you always want to refer to the packaging. On each package of fertilizer, the manufacturer is going to place what the recommended settings are for your type of spreader. It's really important to get to know the square footage, get to know exactly how much lawn area you have. We are big believers here, right after your core aeration, getting down a lawn top dressing. Basically, it's compost. And we're going out and we're, we're spreading that out over our yard. We recommend quarter inch to no more than a half inch thick. What's great about the top dressing, it serves dual purposes really. If we've seeded, we need to cover up that seed. Keep the birds from eating it, keep the, give it a nice growing medium as that new sprout is coming up through. Perfect time to put down the lawn top dressing. When do we fertilize next? Here at the garden center, we don't want to tell folks how many times to fertilize. We know that everyone might have their own plan that they're on. But our general recommendation is, again, that first feeding of the year, possibly uh, the latter part of March into early April, and then again before the real heat of the summer sets in. And anything in the fall? We, many folks will say that's the most important feed of the year, is getting in what a lot of folks call that final fall feed or the winterization. Around here, our recommendation is if we're, if we're talking Halloween, even into the early part of November, we're absolutely fine. Weed control. Which is really important. Here at Takawa's, we don't really carry or encourage a weed and feed. What do we suggest customers do? We don't have a traditional weed and feed. It's kind of like you're trying to do two things in one bag. You're trying to promote health and vitality, while at the same time you're trying to promote the demise. What we are believers in practicing here is, when need be, we can control weeds with some spot control. Ultimately, we all know that the best preventative for a weed problem is a nice, thick, healthy root system of your lawn. That's where we want to guide towards. What we do practice here is the use of a pre-emergent. Put down in the spring, 
what a pre-emergent will do is, let's just say it'll form this barrier down in your soil that will prevent the germination of any weed seeds. Okay, so we've done our early spring maintenance program. Our lawn is happy, it's greening up. When the heat of summer spreads it, uh, sets in, little TLC we should be doing there? Well, I think we've all experienced it. We've looked wonderful for the first couple months of summer and then the heat sets in, the late June into July, definitely well into August. And we walk out one day and all of a sudden our lawn just looks, what's happened? Uh, at that point, uh, there are some things we can do to kind of help bring it back. We really want to refrain from any overstimulating, say with a, a, a fertilizer during that heat of summer. No fertilizer. We at don't want to fertilize okay. that at midsummer. A few things that we can do. Number one for us, and I think many folks here are familiar with Revive. Uh, Revive's from right here in Colorado. Came came to us when our when our heavy drought years really started. Uh, Revive is basically a, a, a water surfactant. It's, it's a wetting agent allow that water to penetrate down deeper, those roots to drive down to where that moisture is, helping us get through the summer, through that heat period. And what if you're, you think your lawn is a little starved for iron? That's another way to do that? If you think that you are paling out, you're, you're, you don't have that green color that you would really like, there's a product that we have here. It's, it's, it's an iron supplement. Uh, we have iron rich here. It's a granular form. Uh, put it in your spreader and spread it out. John and a whole raft of garden experts will be here to answer all of your lawn questions, all of your gardening questions. Come see us at Tagawas. We will be so happy to help you be green and grow. If you like this video, feel free to share it with a friend and come see us at TagawaGardens.com for more videos like this. You'll also find us on Facebook and Twitter.